So I've done a couple cooks with this Brazilian flame rotisserie to know that I've got something here a little bit special. And that in here is what today's show is all about as I wanna take that special and make it just a little bit more special. And in doing so, I wanna utilize that top warming plate into the recipe. And I gotta tell you, if I could pull this off, it is gonna be a Brazilian flame game changer. That said, you are just gonna have to stay tuned to see how this one turns out. But what I wanna do here now is we do have a little bit of prep work to do. Let's turn our attention down down to the board and let's start the show. All righty guys, look, so this one's gonna get started with two Wild Fork chickens. You can grab these at Wild Fork or wildfork.com. I do have a 20 off 100. That'll be down in the description. Otherwise, just grab two birds at your local market. And the first thing you wanna do is open them up and dry them off. You gotta make sure you dry them off 100%. After you get that dried off, I've got some Brazilian rubs here. I am gonna go with that. Once dried off, I will utilize that Brazilian rub. That is gonna be my base coat. And you wanna make sure that you rub the bird top, bottom, get underneath those wings, underneath the legs, you know the deal. Now you don't wanna go with any binders, trust me, you'll get enough rub to stick. Once you get that base coat down, I will get another coat on. This is gonna be more of a traditional chicken rub. It is gonna have your lemon, your lime, your herbs. And again, I am gonna get that rub on all parts of the chicken. That is very important. Do not forget that underneath, you can even go some in the cavity. Once you get those birds all rubbed down, leave them on the board to rest for about 15, 20 minutes. After that time, I'll bring you guys back and we will move on to the next step. So that next step couldn't be more simple, and that is gonna be utilizing the skewers that came with your Brazilian flame. This is the two-pronged skewer, one directly in the middle. We will get both birds on one skewer each. So that's two birds, two skewers, and basically the way I like to do it is use the wing side, breasts up, is gently move the skewer through the cavity of the bird. Do not put your hand in the front of the bird because you do not want to poke your this should be non-resistance going through. Once you get both birds skewered up, you are gonna grab some butcher's twine. Don't have butcher's twine? I got a link down in the description straight from Amazon. You could pick some up. At that point, what we gotta do is we gotta tie the wings and tie the legs up. This is simple. We are backyard pit masters. Any type of knot will do. But basically what I like to do is once I go around the bird, if you do a regular bow tie type knot and just twist it once, twist it twice, maybe twist it three times, pull it tight and then tie yourself a regular knot. That is all you got to do. Grab a knife, grab a scissor, be careful and just clip the ends off. Two butcher's twines per bird. And once you get all that tied up, it is time to head on over to our Brazilian flame and get that fired up. So guys, starting your Brazilian flame couldn't be more simple. You're gonna need a propane for your flame and also an electric source for your rotation. Other than that, it is one, two, three. You're gonna get a timer. You're gonna get a temp reader. That's gonna be up top. There is your button for your rotation. And also you're gonna have two knobs. That is gonna work one set of flames. Throw in an automatic ignition for both flames. Makes it one, two, three simple. Basically what I like to do is I like to turn both sides up full and let it preheat up to that 300 plus and then adjust from there. And usually all that takes only about four or five minutes or so. Let's make our way back down to the shack as we let this preheat, grab our birds and load them up on the pit. This wireless temp reader is by a company called Chef's Temp. It is gonna read the ambient temperature of the pit and also the breast temperature of the bird. I will get one in each breast. And remember, we are not cooking this bird to slice, so we are gonna cook it a little faster than normal. 
as we are only gonna pull it apart. You will see that in a bit. So one chef's temp goes in each breast, we will get it up onto the rotisserie. I will go one for the top burner, one for the bottom burner. Shut the gate and just let them run. I am thinking about an hour or so. At that time, I will bring you guys back and we will move on to that next step. So after about an hour and a half or so, we have reached about 167 on each breast. That is gonna be perfect. And while we pull these off the pit, let's just admire the color of that chicken. I mean, it looks absolutely incredible. Not to mention the smell here is in the air. Once we get both birds off, we will get them down to the shack. That is the shack right there. Once in the shack, I will pull those skewers out and pulling the skewers out are just as easy as putting them in. Once you remove both birds from the skewers and because we are not cooking to slice, we are cooking to pull apart. You could put your heat proof gloves on because we are gonna start to pull it apart. I am looking to get about 90% breast meat, maybe a little bit of dark meat in, no skin is necessary. Because after we get it pulled apart, I will bring you guys back and we will start assembling our pull apart chicken sandwiches that I am telling you are flavorized through the roof. So remember, no rest here is necessary. Get your heat proof gloves on and you could use a knife if you want to slice it off. Otherwise, just grab it. Again, remember, you are looking for mostly breast meat as that is going to play better in the sandwich. Once you get all that breast meat pulled off, maybe a little bit of dark in there, you are going to want to get your chef's knives and start chopping it up chop 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 and continue to chop you want nice bite-sized pieces maybe the size of a dime or a little bit of less once you get everything all chopped up go back to your brazilian flame and get that warming rack and take it off bring that down to your workstation and you are going to get your slider buns or pretzel buns in once in, we are going to start to assemble our sandwiches and this is going to start with all that chicken that you chopped up. Just kind of lay that across the bread. From there, grab your favorite BBQ sauce and just get a little bit on there. You want a nice BBQ flavor with this sandwich. There is no doubt about it. At that point, grab some thin sliced red onions. Look, if you don't like red onions, you could substitute white, but I am telling you, slice it thin and it goes so perfectly with this sandwich. Sprinkle that red onion all along the top. At that point, grab your cheese of choice. I wish I would have went with a little bit of mozzarella, but I went with a little Gouda and also some Colby Jack as I feel those two are gonna mesh well and play well together. I will get the Colby Jack down first, one slice per slider, and then I will follow that up and hit it with a Gouda, one slice of Gouda per slider. You know where we're going with this. At that point, after you are all cheesed up, get your top crowns and put them on each sandwich from there grab the whole thing bring it back up to your brazilian place it on and make sure both of your burners are on full now look your top may not fit that is okay grab some foil foil it up leave it there you are looking at about 10 15 minutes or so at that point i will bring you guys back Alrighty, all, so we were about 20 minutes or so up top before you pull it off. Move that foil back and take a peek. You definitely want a perfect melt. Whole cook time on this cook here was a little over two hours. We will carefully get that off. Remember, it is hot, so make sure you got a towel or your hands are covered. I will get it down in the shack. You get it to your favorite resting place. At that point, we will admire the work that we not so hardly worked to get this looking perfect. Pull that foil back. And this is pull apart chicken sandwiches, so get in there and just kind of pull them apart. I mean, look at that cheese melt. I mean, this is absolutely incredible and absolutely perfect. The smell coming up from this cannot be beat, trust me. Once you get one bite of these sandwiches, you will come back for more, I can guarantee you that. At this point, what I wanna do is I wanna take this in live 
We got to do that taste test. We got to talk about it. And then we will close out the show. All righty, also, there you have it, man. Pull apart chicken sandwiches. And I can tell you right now, the smell is killer. And I love to take, uh, well, that top tray here on that, uh, on that pit. I am not sure it was ever intended to be used like this. I know it is great for like uh, heating up beans, vegetables, uh, and so forth, maybe some light cooking. But I'll tell you, man, this is, uh, this is taking it a step further. This is perfect. I mean, the bread is super soft. The cheese is nice and melted. I mean, you know, these are these are 100% cheesy good. Let me go in for that taste test and we will talk about it. Wow. So right off the bat, I could tell you that these are just about perfect. I mean, don't discount those red onions unless you're really against red onions. Get them in there. They mesh so well with the um, with the barbecue sauce and the um, the pretzel bun with that little bit of salt. If you don't want to use a pretzel bun, you could use a regular slider bun brush it with oil and maybe hit it with some everything bagel and that is an extra step right there there is no doubt about it I mean these are about a 9.9 out of 10 I don't know if there's anything different that I would do maybe a nice mozzarella cheese would kick them up to that 10 out of 10 who knows I will definitely try that next time but I could tell you you fire up that Brazilian flame cook off a couple chickens. I mean, you can do this with sausage. I mean, the sky is the limit what you could do with this sucker. Just to raise your bar on your outdoor barbecue game this spring and summer, as these are simply amazing. All right, guys, so that is it. That is going to close out this show. I appreciate you all for watching. I'll have links down in the description for this uh, for this pit here. I, I think it is something you definitely should consider as it is a fun pit to work. And I will have some more cooks on this sucker going forward. So you're definitely going to want to stay tuned to that. I've got some, uh, some, some good recipes coming up. So... Um, Definitely hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified every time I upload. Other than that, that is going to close out this show here. I appreciate you all for watching. Again, my name is Tommy. That is the Brazilian Flame. And until next time, we will see you soon.